Thanks very much uh, for the opportunity to be here to uh, the LF. Uh, uh, it's always a pleasure to return to Japan. Uh, it's a special place um, and a place that, because I've lived here for three years, it's uh, even more special. Uh, and so uh, I welcome questions throughout. Don't wait till the end. If you have any thoughts or questions you want to share, please do. Uh, those of you who have heard me talk before, this is a little bit different in terms of uh, where we're at in our history and what we would like to accomplish. And there are a couple of things going on that the LF actually is, is directly and, and uh, centrally involved in that I'll talk about um, that you may not be aware of. Uh, and I'll, uh, I'll talk about what we need uh, at, at OIN right now from uh, companies that are participating in projects and individuals who are driving projects. Um, and so that's really the call to action. So um, just to make sure we're all on the same page, OIN is a patent risk mitigation organization that was started in 05. Uh, to deal with a uh, monolithic patent threat that was represented by uh, one very large company, that uh, Microsoft, that is now uh, uh, in a very different place in its history and is a, a member in good standing of our community and has pledged its 50 plus thousand patents uh, to support uh, patent risk mitigation uh, in open source. Uh, and so we're in, a, we're in a different place now in that we're seeing the, the evolution of threat go from uh, where we were in 05, it was largely uh, operating company risk, and now we're moving into an era where we have much more, really in the last five to seven years, much more uh, risk that's coming from uh, non-practicing entities or patent assertion entities or patent trolls, whatever we want to call them. These are entities that don't have an operating business other than the monetization of, uh, of intellectual property. Um, and so, the, in, back when OIN was uh, uh, launched in 05, it was a very different world, not only with the patent threat landscape, but the adoption landscape of open source. Uh, precious few truly large companies with large patent portfolios were, uh, were adopting. There was a lot of uh, fear, uncertainty, and doubt uh, in the community, and there was concern around the use of uh, of an adoption of open source technology by large companies that were fearful of, uh, of being uh, asserted against. That world has changed, obviously, and uh, in 05, uh, um, the mission was the, the mission that we have now, which is to encourage freedom of action, freedom of, of adoption, uh, and provide a sense of security uh, to companies looking to uh, adopt open source technology. Uh, clearly the growth uh, since 05 of the open source community has been incredible. Um, it's attributable to the companies that, that are all around the world that uh, are increasingly adopting uh, and embracing open source technology. Uh, and the individuals that are, that are ex exercising creativity to be able to create um, a world in which open source is really the new modality for innovation uh, as project-based innovation is, is emerging as a, as a model um, that, uh, that people are now talking about in business schools, recognizing that this is a, in technology environments that uh, in educational environments, there's a, there's a, a, a buzz about uh, the new ways of, of coming together to create value and it's really a, Nowhere uh, is the concept that was talked a lot about in the 90s, the idea of co-opetition, which comes from game theory, is it more prevalent than in the open source community where we collaborate to compete more effectively. Uh, and so it's quite a, uh, it's been an exciting ride uh, for me personally, um, but when Microsoft became a licensee in uh, five years ago, it really represented a transition uh, for me uh, in terms of what I do on a daily basis and for OIN as we, we now are, are uh, joining hands with the community in a different way because uh, of, of the changing nature of threat. Um, that timing is not just coincidental, it's also kind of was the beginning of when we started to see more and more companies recognizing their interdependencies and behaving differently about how they file patents, how they build portfolios, and how they use their patents. And that's a, the, uh, the socialization and re-socialization of, uh, 
uh, of the intellectual property world. Uh, you see it, uh, Jimmy just came in from, uh, from Ericsson. I think that's a perfect example of a company that is, uh, is transitioning its intellectual property strategy to, uh, to recognize the new realities and understanding how important open source is. And that's just one example of, of one of the most stalwart intellectual property uh, centric companies in the world. Uh, to now, uh, you know, now we have many, many, many examples. Some of their customers, like AT and T, is a good example, are also heavily involved in in rethinking their intellectual property strategy, what they protect, how they protect it, and open source is necessitating that kind of reconsideration. Uh, and so it's having an impact that I think a lot of people on a daily basis don't really, don't really contemplate, but the impact is quite significant uh, and not to, be, uh, uh, not to be diminished in any way because th this, is a, this is truly a powerful trend of uh, spending less money on patenting uh, and, uh, and becoming more precise about how patents can serve as a source of innovation. Uh, versus uh, looking at it as a as a vehicle for uh, um, for um, the assertion of a negative right, which is really what patents do. Um, but I think we're we're seeing collectively that people are thinking about it: what does it enable versus what does it what does it prevent? Uh, and I think that's a healthy way to think about intellectual property uh, because it puts us in a position of thinking about positives versus, uh, versus negatives and, limit, and, and look at less about limitations and more about opportunities. Uh, the original companies were IBM, Red Hat, uh, at the time Novell, which is where SUSE was, uh, Sony, NEC, uh, and, uh, and then uh, Philips. Toyota and Google came in later uh, and it's, uh, um, they're obviously exercising leadership. All of these companies are in some sense, because the OIN license is free, they have for the last 19 years, they have been uh, subsidizing everyone else's participation in this community because um, this is not without its costs in terms of running and operating this entity, uh, being, being able to revise the Linux system definition, which is the scoping of the license. Um, and so that's lots of contribution that comes from lots of companies, uh, but uh, uh, the, the core companies are, are the ones that are listed here. And uh, these are companies that recognize their responsibility, a responsibility in, um, uh, in protecting uh, freedom of action, freedom to operate because of the potential uh, negative effects uh, and chilling effects that patent litigation can have on, uh, on open source adoption. They recognize that they need to, needed to be guardians uh, and stewards of, uh, of freedom of action and open source. Um, there are just about 4,000 right now. I think the number's up a little bit since I created the slide deck. Um, and so 4,000 companies, many of the largest companies in the world with the most significant patent portfolios in the world are part of this community. Um, they own oh, collectively over 3.35 million patents. Um, and uh, the OIN patent portfolio, when it was at its largest, was 1,500 patents and applications. Since Microsoft became part of our community, there are far fewer patents now um, as we look to focus more on, uh, on the risk that's coming from patent assertion entities, and I'll talk about how we're doing that in a bit. Um, there are over 4,500 packages um, that are software packages that help that the, the functionality contained in those packages provides a scope uh, collectively. They provide the scope of what the cross-license obligation is. So insofar as you have a patent that reads on, uh, on functionality contained in uh, these 4,500 packages, um, that patent is part of the cross-license. So everybody that's in this community benefits from having access to uh, the cross-license patents. Um, and it continues to grow. The Linux system, um, I'll talk about it more specifically in a few minutes, but uh, we just had an update to the Linux system definition, and this is the most important thing we do, is make sure that we get, get it right um, and expand the definition to accommodate the growth of open source. It's a completely um, unique uh, approach. No license has ever existed in, uh, in technology. Uh, which had a uh, uh, had the, the option 
uh, of expanding to accommodate uh, growth of technology. Um, in fact, it's uh, uh, so unusual that it's, uh, it's quite remarkable to people who when I first presented to them uh, over the years because the idea that, uh, that you would al allow for, you would sign a license that would allow for the licensor to expand the scope of the license unilaterally without approval of the licensee uh, is, uh, would be preposterous if it were any other context except open source, which is uh, beyond special as all of you well understand and that's why you're here. And so uh, we expand the scope of the Linux system definition. As I said, uh, it takes us about two years to do that because we're uh, very careful about how we do it because again, it's the most important thing we do and uh, overly expanding to capture appropriately proprietary technology would be uh, uh, damaging uh, and under expanding uh, to, uh, so that uh, we're not we're not keeping up with the growth of the, uh, of the open source community uh, and technology development, uh, that would also be damaging. So uh, we, we try to maintain a happy medium and continue to advance uh, the, the benefits and the protections that are offered by the license. Um, it's very much a global organization and that's by design, um, but it's also just reflecting the open source community. Open source is global, we have to be global. Uh, one thing I'm really proud of is the growth in APAC. Um, when I first took this role, I th uh, there were only six companies that were uh, from Asia uh, and a disproportionately small percentage of the uh, Asia Pacific represented disproportionately small percentage of the total licensing um, activity. And so we have grown this in a very purposeful way with uh, lots of trips to, uh, to China. Um, we've really tapped into the, and, and lived in the slipstream of the growth that Linux Foundation has seen uh, from Chinese companies in the last seven years in particular, um, but clearly obviously spending a lot of time in, in Japan and Korea uh, as well. So um, again, we're, we're seeing growth uh, really, uh, really move in a direction that we're very happy with and we expect that over time that Asia Pacific will have more representation in, uh, in OIN than, than even North America. I think one thing, I mean, just not to belabor the point, but when I talk to the European Commission, people in Europe, I think they have a, a, a belief that open source is, is less prevalent in Europe than it really is, but I think this has always been a, uh, a key feature in that a significant percentage of our, the most significant percentage of our licensee community uh, comes from Europe. We just may not have the flagship companies that we have in, uh, in, uh, in Asia and, uh, and North America, but, uh, but there are uh, lots of uh, small to medium sized companies that are incredibly active as well as an increasing number of large companies. Um, what we do, I use the term slipstream, and really what we do is not only um, kind of grow as, as the open source community grows, but we, we grow um, the Linux system definition specifically out of the inv innovation that comes from uh, major projects uh, like the LF. Uh, the project leads, the technical leads, uh, will nominate packages uh, and then, uh, and then uh, essentially advocate as to why these packages should be included and then we expand the scope of the cross license, uh, the Linux system definition by having our technical committee review, it's one representative from each, of each company, and then the technical advisory council. Um, uh, we have many participants in the technical advisory council from Japan. Uh, in fact, we have a meeting on Thursday, uh, which we'll be doing, which Jim Zemlin will be speaking at and providing updates on developments at the, at the Linux Foundation. And uh, um, we do this on a regular basis at open source summits around the world. Um, in addition, there, there are, in are working sessions throughout the year between the Technical Advisory Council and the Technical Committee, and we count on the Technical Advisory Council um, to provide nominations and to, uh, um, to be able to support the growth of the Linux system definition. This is just an indication that it's pretty much every, every project that uh, you can imagine is represented in, uh, in the, I think it's uh, 390 projects maybe, 
Uh, so a lot of the, the very significant projects, but we'd like to have much more, uh, many more nominations and much more um, code that's included in the Linux system definition. Uh, we think it's, it's critical that we keep pace and, uh, uh, and this process, again, takes us two years to kind of go through the vetting, nomination and vetting process, and then the approval process uh, by the, uh, the, the board of OIN. Uh, and we want more participation. If you, some of you are o OIN licensees, and you'd like to participate in the Technical Advisory Council, please reach out to me, reach out to Shabbat Hassan, uh, or anyone at the LF, and you know, like Mike Dolan, and let us know, and uh, we will certainly um, include you. Um, we are looking for more inclusivity, growth in that area, and better, um, and more, uh, more nominations, and better nominations that coming from uh, all manner of projects. Uh, we do the same thing with the LF that we do with, with all the other project management organizations that are out there, uh, and we try to, uh, to maintain, maintain an open dialogue that allows for uh, these nominations to, uh, to, to come uh, during this period that we're in right now, in fact. So uh, that's uh, very important to me that we get this right and that we do, uh, we do a good job of expanding uh, in a thoughtful, measured, uh, and practical way. Lots of companies, these are just representative samples of companies that are in our community. We've had incredible growth uh, in the last couple of years in the financial services community. We expect that kind of growth to occur in, in energy. Uh, I was just at the Open Charge Alliance 10th anniversary. We've been working uh, with the Open Charge Alliance. They've now developed a common standard uh, for Europe uh, for EV charging. Uh, we would like to see uh, um, more, uh, more nominations coming from the energy space, meeting with Shell and, uh, and with uh, Total and others that are becoming much more active in, uh, in EV charging, uh, as well as uh, the, the variety of projects that exist in, in energy, which is a quite, I think, quite uh, young but vital um, project. Um, that the LF uh, manages, and uh, so we're very excited about that. Uh, and uh, we're looking at uh, industrial automation and all manner of other, other um, technologies uh, and, and the projects that are supporting those, those technologies. So we have a number of licensees from different sectors. Obviously, there's a global, uh, global reach. This evidence is the global reach of, uh, of OIN. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we expect actually an increased level of, of representation uh, from, uh, from companies in India uh, as we see high growth there in, uh, in, and more interest in the, in the OIN license and having, having companies, some of the largest companies in the world in the systems integration space, part of our community, as well as having uh, giants like Reliance, the Reliance Group, as part of our community I think is very important and, and I see that over time a company like Reliance may well be uh, more front and center uh, and have greater visibility uh, because of the diversity of its, its product mix uh, and its commitment to open source uh, as it grows. Uh, I'll talk more specifically now about this, the, the, the threat and the migration of threat. Uh, to non-practicing entities. There aren't many companies that live on the wrong side of history and, and, and uh, will, are choosing to reside there permanently. I think lots of companies are in, in transition that were um, uh, using their patents, I would say, in a, in a more predatory way. I think there's more collaboration than ever, more opportunities for companies to come together to be able to uh, um, solve their differences rather than allow patents to slow or stall the progress of, of technology development and innovation. And so uh, that's a good thing. Uh, and so I think there'll be fewer and fewer uh, operating company challenges. Um, but the problem is that operating companies sell off their patents and uh, are largely responsible for fueling the growth of patent assertion entity activity um, because the people that they sell them to, when they sell patents out of their portfolio, 
portfolios uh, that they no longer need or want and want to be able to generate some return, uh, which is you know, obviously a very legitimate activity. Uh, the unfortunate thing is those patents are, uh, uh, are not inoculated when they're sold uh, for, and uh, from uh, the negative effects that they can have when in the hands of PAEs. While that would diminish, doing some kind of inoculation like that would diminish the, uh, the, the return uh, on the monetization activity that an operating company is involved in, uh, we do see some companies like IBM um, that when they sell patents uh, are, uh, are very careful about protecting the open source community. Uh, and so we'd like to, to see that as a, as a, as a trend um, where companies are recognizing that taking a little bit less but protecting the community is an important benefit that, uh, that should be thought about uh, as we think about the, 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 greater, uh, the greater good and how this community thrives on the idea that people are looking out for each other to be able to support the, the common interests of the, uh, of the whole. Um, this is just an example of some of the, the cases that have, have uh, we've seen in the last five years or so. Uh, and, uh, and I'll talk about what we're doing about this. Um, and so the, these, we have descriptions like this. If anybody is interested uh, from your legal uh, team in talking to us about the cases and the status, we, we monitor it quite closely and we put together things like this. These are, these are things that, you know, Valtris is, you know, a, 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 it's not just intellectual ventures that we're concerned about. Intellectual ventures are the largest, most uh, polished and perhaps the best funded uh, patent assertion entity in the world. Um, it was founded by the former CTO of, uh, of Microsoft, uh, a very sophisticated individual. Um, these are not people to be trifled with, and so it's, a, it's a, a, a battle that we fight as they've entered the open source space. Before, when they were only focused on uh, the, a random group of companies uh, to target, and not, so, not focused on open source, we were watching them, and we expected that this would occur, um, but, uh, but now we have a much more acute focus on them on a day in and day out basis, uh, and maintain a dialogue with them to understand uh, where they're going, what they're doing, and, uh, and how we might be able to uh, uh, become involved in, in limiting the effect of these patents. Uh, and because these patents do come from licensee companies uh, that they have in most cases, um, we do trace the, uh, the equivalent of the Ferron Trail to understand where these, uh, where these assets have been and uh, whether some, some of our companies in our community may have actually uh, gained a license through their, their position, participation in OIN um, when these patents were actually held by uh, by, op by operating companies that are also that were also part of the OAN community, so that's a that's taking up a fair amount of time right now. Uh, but I think it's time well spent in order to provide a provide clarity uh, to companies as to whether they in fact are protected by patents that are being asserted against them by uh, non-practicing entities right now. Um, the uh, there's a, a broad range of companies that we partner with, RPX, LotNet, uh, and Allied Security Trust, and also Unified Patents. And uh, uh, we founded, co-founded and funded uh, the uh, Open Source Zone, which we did with the Linux Foundation, um, as well as with Microsoft and IBM. That the list of companies that now support that that zone has increased, but quite frankly, the problem is more significant than the amount of funding that we've all allocated to it. We need more companies to participate, um, and specifically because so much of the targeting is on CNCF technology, uh, and it is a, as you all understand, is a, it is a crucial project not just to the Linux Foundation, but to the world um, and uh, the open source world in particular, that we need to be very focused on, uh, on taking this threat seriously. Um, there's even some consideration being given by Unified to adding a zone that would be focused exclusively on, 
on CNCF technologies uh, so that there could be an acute focus and, and we could potentially raise funds from the community to be able to support uh, developing another zone. Uh, these are not inexpensive activities um, in terms of uh, uh, getting a, a pre-existing patent to, uh, to be invalidated, but it's something that we think is very important uh, uh, as a strategy um, because it's the only way that we can deal with the fact that we live with a, we live in a world where far too many patents are granted. Not enough diligence is done to understand these patents, these applications uh, prior to the grant, and so we have lots of legacy issues that we've inherited from patent uh, uh, and trademark office uh, actions around the world. And that's just a reality. It's not to, to you know, criticize these people, but they're typically operating with too few resources. They're understaffed. Uh, and, uh, and there's lots of pressure um, for a number of reasons to grant patents um, because of the, um, the connection that many economists have made between patenting and innovation. And so uh, this is an area where you know, we'd love to see walk-ins. People come in and say, hey, we want to support this because we recognize how important uh, the zone is. We re recognize how important uh, CNCF is. Um, and uh, so at this, if it is, does become a new zone, it's going to be, become a new zone because of the level of participation and the level of interest and awareness uh, that companies have in, uh, in how important it is uh, to interdict this, uh, this threat uh, that comes from non-practicing entities. Uh, just so that you, you have a sense of, of Unified, the reason we use Unified is they're one of the largest filers, they have the most sophisticated uh, machine outside of, of the largest companies in the world that file these, these uh, uh, IPRs or ex parte reviews, both are tools that can be used after a patent is granted to be able to invalidate it. Uh, and so they're very active. You see Samsung, you know, Apple, and Alphabet obviously very, 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 very involved in utilizing this strategy, as well as all the companies here. This is a significant, significant uh, allocation of resources to be able to uh, undertake this many challenges to uh, poor quality patents. This is just an example of some of the projects that uh, the open source zone, since we, we began funding it, have, uh, have assisted with in, uh, in eradicating uh, and invalidating uh, threat, invalidating patents and eradicating threat. Um, and uh, the spend is, as I said, significant. If you look at this, in $15 million, is a lot of money for us to spend and for the LF to spend and Microsoft and, and uh, IBM and, and now companies like, uh, like Amazon, even Apple, is, uh, Apple supports all zones of the, along with a handful of other companies, they support every zone that, that, uh, that Unified manages. And so, uh, so in, you know, people might think that Apple is not, uh, uh, not that open sourcey, but it actually is is one of the lead companies in in dealing with 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 threat from patent assertion entities, and uh, has uh, has affirmed its support through its investment in uh, in Unified. Amazon's relatively new in supporting this initiative, but it's uh, Amazon is going through a, I would say, a transition to develop an, an identity in open source that, uh, on the legal side, that is very encouraging, and so we're we're very supportive of uh, of what they're doing, and we expect them to be doing more. So stay tuned, um, because there there's a lot there are lots of creative people there that are looking to uh, make their mark and and help uh, deal with legal issues associated with open source. Uh, Mercedes, uh, Meta, uh, uh, obviously are part of this as well. Uh, Google was one of the first companies to support uh, the, uh, the establishment of Unified, so their, their legacy is very important and their investment through OIN uh, is very, very powerful. Um, again, $15 million spent to date, uh, 60 plus uh, wins. Um, and uh, a number of pending activities. This is just a, uh, a, a very 
you know, you get up in the morning and you just do it. You just, it's like OIN or lots of other jobs. It's something you do every day to be able to uh, deal with risk. And uh, you're constantly, when you're in the business of, of killing patents, uh, neutralizing threat associated with poor quality patents uh, that are held by PAEs, it's a, it's a daily activity of just identifying uh, every, uh, all the patents that are out there that, uh, that are concerning and, uh, and going about the business of, uh, of filing, uh, uh, collecting prior art and uh, filing uh, ex parte reviews or uh, inter parte reviews to be able to deal with this, this threat. Um, and as I said, I think you know, CNCF zone is not, uh, not unrealistic. It's such an important project and such significant technology um, that we all rely on that uh, I would like to see it it uh, identified as specifically as its own zone, and this is something that you know is being discussed. And some, and I talk to uh, the people at Unified just about every week, so uh, I know it's this is something that could be quite important again. But it's not going to happen without funding, um, and it has to be funding that comes from uh, from companies that recognize as the original six companies for OIN, and then later Google and Toyota recognize the responsibility to participate in protecting the community and to take, uh, uh, take measures to protect the modality that is open source. Uh, in addition, I, think, uh, I don't think it's unrealistic to expect that there might be an open source hardware, an open hardware zone, probably a better way to characterize it. Uh, I think at some point, you know, Risk Five is uh, is incredibly important, uh, and I think if you see, if you look at the activities, uh, the relationships between relationship between ARM uh, and Qualcomm is just an example of how uh, how that world is changing, and uh, uh, I would expect there'll be a uh, the growth of op of uh, Risk Five will be something that. Uh, that in five years uh, people are looking back at and, and, and recognizing very explicitly how um, the level of innovation in the, in the chip business has, will have, uh, have got, undergone a, a revolution, not just an evolution. And so uh, we are, um, one of my uh, side activities is to try to work to put together an open hardware uh, patent risk mitigation program and organization very much like OIN where OIN would be involved in uh, being the outsourced service provider to, uh, to leverage our community of, of almost 4,000 companies uh, to be able to uh, quickly get the open hardware uh, patent risk mitigation activity up and running and to be able to provide uh, anticip anticipatory support uh, in a space which, uh, which we could all expect because the number of patents that are out there in the history of the industry, we can expect that uh, that threat will emerge uh, from companies that are less successful uh, in, uh, in, in leveraging Risk V uh, to be able to support them, themselves and their customers uh, in the future. So stay tuned for that as well. That's something that we are working very hard on. Uh, and there are companies that are also looking at and asking us to become involved in, in uh, something that's related solely to AI, a patent risk mitigation uh, organization. So lots of creativity is coming from the legal world and in, from intellectual property professionals designed around reducing risk uh, of patent litigation uh, in uh, uh, in open source uh, and in key technology areas that are that uh, may or may not partake of open source technology, and so I think it's uh, it's an incredibly important activity and uh, and a, a significant uh, investment is needed for us to uh, to do well in this. Uh, I'll briefly talk about uh, something that I have been kind of on the edges of discussion. Um, this just gives you a sense of, uh, and most of this is available on the website, uh, of how we go about putting together the uh, Linux system definition. Um, we are constantly uh, looking at new technology, getting nominations, but the nomination process could be better. Uh, we'd like to see, as I said at the outset, more inclusivity, more participation from companies who have something at stake. Uh, if you're utilizing technology and it's important to you, uh, uh, you're part of our community, then nominate 
uh, that technology so that we can evaluate it and can include it. And most of what we get nominated after people kind of, kind of are calibrated as to how, uh, what kinds of things we typically are looking for, uh, most of what's nominated is, uh, is accepted. So I think there's a, there's a good chance that if you nominate something and you, you create a compelling case as to why it should be included and you can show evidence of use that the technology is actually being used, um, that tells us that there's a certain ripeness uh, to that technology and it creates opportunities for us to be able to do more good things by reducing patent risk associated with the technology. Um, the technical committee, very important. It's a methodical patient process. We are not looking to be, uh, uh, to include everything, but we are looking to include uh, what is important, what's core uh, to fundamental projects that are out there and, uh, and make sure that we don't miss important technologies and then create opportunities for litigation to, pot, to, to, be, to germinate in places that we, uh, we certainly don't want to see it and thereby you know, cause the a slowing of innovation, which is the, really the, the thing that we're all focused on of this, through this modality of collaborative development that, that is uh, central to open source's uh, success. Uh, this gives you a sense of how we've expanded over the years um, and uh, it's really, uh, I'd say 18 months is the, uh, is the shortest interval that we've ever gone to, to update the Linux system definition but it's averaging about two years uh, and so we're looking at table 13 right now and hoping that we can, uh, within the next uh, 22 months, we can have that out and, uh, and, and protect more technologies and reduce more companies from risk. Uh, protect or insulate companies from risk. Um, we get, as I said, we get lots of packages in. Um, this is a very big expansion, um, but it, we felt a very important one. Um, we're cleaning up, we're doing version updates. Um, this just gives you an example of the individual technology sectors and projects that we are uh, uh, supporting uh, in this table 12, which just was announced uh, this summer and uh, the effective date was in August. Um, and so uh, more. Uh, and this is my final comment, is that what we really need is, is more nominations. Um, uh, we do a lot of outreach in the community and the Technical Advisory Council is a very important part of that outreach. So if you'd like to be part of the, of the on, in this process and, uh, and be, have a, a front row seat in, uh, in evaluating the nominations that are coming in, and working with our technical committee, uh, I encourage you to do so. We have about 34 companies right now that are part of the Technical Advisory Council. Uh, but as I said, we'd like to see that grow. We'd like to see new technology areas represented. Um, we've just added a couple of banks that are interested in, in and are starting to re-perceive themselves as technology-centric. Um, and uh, we'd like to see, uh, as I said, the energy sector and other sectors uh, where open source is, is prevalent, uh, um, join that, that cause and, and become involved. Uh, and, uh, and we'd like to, uh, to make sure that we continue to do what we're doing. We're trying to do it with humility and a recognition of where we fit in the ecosystem. Uh, and uh, for those of you who are part of this community, part of the OAN community, um, we're uh, in your debt. Uh, we would like to see more companies participate uh, in OIN, sign the OIN license, and also obviously more companies participate in helping shape the future of patent non-aggression by nominating packages for inclusion in the Linux system definition. Thank you very much for your time and attention today, and thanks again to the LF for the opportunity to come in and to be able to address you.